<laughs> Excuse that. Hello, welcome back to the fish locker out on the shore. What are we doing today, James? Foraging. We've got some massive spring tides today and we're going to go and try and do some foraging. We're going to have a walk along. We're, we're a little bit early today. We're two hours of the ebb left. So the tide's going to be going out for another two hours. We're going to follow it down right to the low tide line and we'll have a walk about, see what we can find. All right, you ready to go? He's gone. Let's go. James, mm -hmm. I'll tell you this from experience. Don't fill your bucket up full of rocks right at the start of the day because it's only going to get heavier. All right? <laughs> On this first bit of shoreline you can see, we've got some mussels, some winkles, plenty of limpets. There will be some hard shell surf clams somewhere around the place. And what else have we got? What else can we find in amongst the seaweed? Quite a lot of winkles, isn't there? Yep. Up here on the higher area of the shore, you can see this is where there's an awful lot of surf action because the seaweeds are stunted and a little bit battered. You will generally only find things that can cling right to the rocks. Like these limpets and this, that on there, is an invasive Pacific rock oyster. Now, I could, morally, I could smash that because it's an invasive species, but I'll leave it because I know there are some people that like eating those, so I'll leave them for them to collect. We've got quite a lot of winkles, painted top shells, loads and loads of big limpets. What have you found down here, James? Empty. Empty mussel shells, okay. Yeah. Oh. There's a gaper clam. Dust. Oh, yeah. It's very hard to find anything. There's a few more oysters here. It's not right. Oh, there's a fancy oyster, isn't it? There, look. Now, if I find one of the native flat oysters, I'll put a comparison in here to show you, but. Yeah. Your rock oysters, they cling to rocks or create their own reef, whereas a flat oyster is generally well, flatter and you'll find them out in the sand. Hey. But there's two. Dad. Hey, James, what? Oh, so this rock. Go on then. Oh, what you found under there? Nothing. Nothing, okay. As we're getting lower down, the winkles are getting bigger. Now these are edible, you can eat these. But here in this area, as you can see, it's, it's a little bit silty. So I'd have to, you'd have to purge these, I'd have to keep these in clean water for a couple of three days and let them spit all the mud out before there'd be any decent to eat. But also what we've we got, there's a hard shell surf clam and some nice sized mussels. A few, yeah, a few more oysters as well. Yeah, these are a good feed these. We have a few videos already on the channel of, uh, of mussels. For anybody that's interested who hasn't seen one before, I will tag it into the description of this video. Yeah. Plenty of mussels and oysters around. But Hannah has found, you know what that is? A little furrowed crab. Furrowed crab. There is a um, little goby or something as well. There he is. Come on. I had to get the crab out the way to get oh, him. Yeah. Oh, he's off. He's fast, him, isn't he? That was a common blenny. Oh, was it? Or a shanny, as it's sometimes called. Yeah, he's fast. A few a few different things under here. A broad-clawed porcelain crab. Plenty of hermit crabs. Stacks of winkles in this area, isn't there? There's loads of dog whelk shells as well. Yes, James? What have you found? Another hard shell clam, but oh, empty. And amongst all the winkles, got an empty razor clam. So I know by finding these up here, 
dead, the chances are when the tide goes down, there will be live ones out there. There is a queenie scallop shell or variegated scallop. There's Hannah doing her best, Just having battle with a, a velvet crab. <laughs> velvet swimming crab. James, can you bring back it? It's a swimming, you tell it's a swimming crab by these back legs. <laughs> it's a little male. Angry, aren't they, these ones? No, I don't want it. Oh, I'm not surprised. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Checking along areas like this, like these little ridges, because if anything gets washed down, generally it will settle in like these little gullies. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> fishing weight. Keep that. Worst not, what not. Oh, 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 don't stand on it. I'm a stola. What have you found? A stola. Right, wait there, wait there. Is it a hard one? Watch this. Good spot, James. What did you see when you stood near it? Did it make like a little splash? Mm. Look at these sides here. Yeah. Watch this. Can I pick it up? Turn it over. Well done. That's what we're looking for. Good lad. This one has got a slip Olympic on its back. Now that the tide's ebbed off enough so that we can get down onto the sandbanks. What are we looking for now, James? Razor clams. And all you use is you just use a bit of salt. So we're walking around and we're looking for like the little holes in the sand. And what you're looking for is a little hole like that and you just give it a little bit of sand a, a little bit of salt and what should happen see and in just a minute you're gonna look for some as well James don't get too close get ready get ready Oh, 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 there it is. You gonna get it? You have to hold on tight. Gary, way, oh, well, well done. What's this? That, that is a dead sea potato. Oh. That, well done, James. You did that perfectly. That is a razor clam. Sadly, that is a little bit too small. So, what we'll do is we'll just. We'll drop him back. What we want is we're wanting ones that are about that big. But all we did was we just looked for a little hole, give it a little bit of salt, and waited. This Hannah, this one's actually alive. Look, is you it? see it moving. It's things at the bottom. See? Him? Oh yeah. That is a sea potato. These live under the sand. I don't know if you can see it moving those tendrils. Is that one not having it? No. no. Put him back. It's like the holes that I found. Yeah. My holes are over here. What we'll do is we'll walk around and you might see them squirt up like that. That's one there. Look at that. There next to me, Fudge. Is that teeny weeny? Yeah. Let's see. Now, ideally, you're looking for a hole that will be about that big. Generally, the bigger the hole, the bigger the razor clam. Walking around, you will see like little jets of water squirt up. Oh, look! Here's another one. That there will be a dead one. And these are like scavenging dog whelks that are eating it. But here's a clam look, James, that was hiding. See it? 
Now look. But that is that is what we're looking for. Something that size and bigger. James. James, come here, look. You see that outline? Oh, see it? <laughs> that made me jump then. See it? Yeah. You see, it's, you see it snapped, did you? Yeah. Oh. There's another. Oh my god. Good sick is that is that a razor clam that's just there's one's just squirted up behind you there or no? Shot right up my leg. Right, that's what we're talking about. Hmm. Gonna go in, is this? I'll come back to that. Found a there's a, a rock oyster stuck at the top of there. Also, there's quite a big velvet crab in here. Now you have to be you have to be quick with these because they are very aggressive. <laughs> Fast, aren't they? We have had an awful lot of bad weather lately, and you can see where all the disturbances. This is dead eel grass, and all of this is just dead patches of seaweed that have all been washed in. But if you keep your eyes open, you can find things in amongst it. We've just found there that is a an empty bullhus egg. That is a great spotted cat shark's egg. Yeah, the, uh, the weather has washed it all in, so occasionally what you can find is you do find clams and scallops and bits and pieces. I even found an octopus one time in all the seaweed, so it is worth just keeping an eye out. Right, have a look what we've got here. What's this here? Jelly blob. A jelly blob, look. It almost looks like... Jellyfish. Yeah, well it is a jellyfish, it's a crystal jellyfish. But you won't know what it looks like, but it looks like uh, a lady's implant. Yep. This here, this is sea lettuce and this is dulse. These little bits here are some pepper dulse. These are all edible. Quite nice to eat. What are you doing? Are you digging for clams? Just making the sand <coughs> I found that empty clam and right. a full scallop. Oh, well done. I'll take that. <laughs> well done. <laughs> I'm just walking around looking for the little jets of water that squirt out. Some of them are quite high, they do squirt like a couple of feet. There's one there. Oh, look at this one, John. Is this one? It might be a, might be a clam. Oh, those gross. Yeah, it might things. be a gaper clam. They can stay in there. So two or three. Oh, there oh. we go. <laughs> my God, that like reached my chest. That might be a clam. Like a big fat gaper clam or something. Oh, it's going. <laughs> if it's just a gaper clam, it'll just be like a... Like a little looks like a thumb. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that's what it is. That is 
the siphon of a gaper clam. James, you want to bring your trowel here? Oh, you're not getting it out. I'm going to dig it out just to show you what it looks like. What are these little blobs of stuff? That is called an, these ones that you're talking about. Yeah. It's called an oyster thief. It's a little piece of seaweed. We have something for you to dig out here, look. Is it a trowel? Yeah. Right, what you need to do is, in your trowel, you need yeah. you to dig a hole there, like that. So dig a deep hole because this thing is living inside of it. Okay, so dig a deep hole there. Good lad. You look like Gollum. Right. You can see how, how much sand I've had to take out to get this clam out. It is like literally a foot down. So just don't squeeze them too hard because they are sand gaper clams or soft shell clams. Um, James, what? That's it there. Let me wash it off and I'll show you. That is it there. What the? Now this is part of the reason why it's called soft shell clam because it never fully closes. But that is, that's an okay size one. That there, that siphon was that long sticking up to the surface. So that's why, with razor clams, they'll come out of the sand and you can get hold of them and pull them out with these. If you get hold of the end, you're never gonna pull that out because look how deep it was, it was over a foot down. Now, we have eaten these before. I don't really like them. They are, um, call it an acquired taste. So what we're gonna do is we'll just put that back. Um, and if you wanna fill all the sand back in for us, please, James. Yeah. You can help us. Ready? There you go. <laughs> I was just walking along here and then I'm sure I saw a clap around here somewhere. There it is. I knew I heard it. <laughs> you see him? Just the edges. Oh, I understand that. There. He is. If I hadn't seen this clap then, I would never have found it. Where is it? Another gaper clam. Tide's just started to turn now. So we'll start heading back. You see all like the little tendrils and the eyes inside of there. There you go. That one's actually a little bit small, but what it's good to do is we we walked along and salted a load of areas, walking one way, and then you walk back over the areas that you've salted, because some of them don't come out straight away. Oh. Just check over. Here. Yeah, just like that. Oh, and here. Oh no, that might be an empty shell, but no, that's a full yeah. one. So we'd salted a couple of holes here, walking that way, and they didn't come out straight away. So walking back. Now look, that one still hasn't come out, but that one has.
<laughs> nice one. Squirt it up your leg. Yeah. Oh, oh, on again. <laughs> Give yourself away. And there's one that's brought itself out. There's one I made earlier. Yeah. Still a little bit small, so we'll put it back. You can see here, see all the drops in the water where it's squirted out of this hole. That's what you're looking for. Like a little number eight or a slit shape. Got a feeling that's going to be a gaper clam. The tide's finished now and it's coming back in. We have had a fantastic little haul. You found more than anybody though, didn't you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Some stunning scallops and not as many as I was hoping for, but still enough razor clams. Usually we either cook them at home or I use them for bait for bream. But what I am going to do is I'm going to cook some on the coals and see what they're like. So we have, I think we have, did we find seven? Seven scallops and half a dozen capable size razor clams. James did collect a few bits and pieces in his bucket as well. We actually found a prawn as well in the seagrass. Is that hiding somewhere in that bucket? It is. It's only okay. tiny. Okay. He's very good at hiding if he is. It is in there. <laughs> <laughs> what we're going to do then is, um, because we've found something, I have some bits and pieces in the van just in case we did. I'm glad because I only brought hula hoops. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. We did bring some snacks for James just in case. But um, yeah, now that we've found something, I think what we're going to do is we will have a walk to a different beach and we'll have a little bit of a cook up. There it is. There. I, I never doubted you. You did. Look there. Can you see it? Can you look at it? Yeah. Thank yeah all right. See you in a bit. Right. We have a little seagull that's already started eating our bread. <laughs> And I am just starting a little bit of a fire. All I'm going to do is I'm going to... I've got some offcuts of pieces of pallet and bits and pieces from the fish locker workshop. Just little pieces from like our projects that are left over. And I'm just building up a bed of coals. And then I'll show you what we're going to do with the cooking. You ready me hand? Right, all I've done there is I've built up a little bit of a fire. We aren't going to be cooking on the flames, we're going to be cooking on the coals. So I just want to build up a bed of coals. Some heat coming off that now. James is working his way through another pack of hula hoops. You turn into a hula hoop, that kid. What we have, we have seven scallops and oh, seven razor clams as well. These, usually, what we'll do at home is if you, you blanch them, is they, they pop open and you can scoop the inside out and cook it. What I am going to do with these is I'm just going to wrap them up like a little tin foil parcel and I'm going to put some, some butter and some garlic, maybe even do two parcels, one with butter and garlic and one with some butter and some chilli. Just to see how it's going to do it, I've never done it that way before, it's just an experiment. They can stay where they are. I did have these sat in some clean seawater and you can see the amount of sand that they've spat out. So just allowing them a little bit of time to purge, that just that half an hour to purge has saved all that sand from being inside of them. There probably will still be a little bit of grit and sand in there, but it's just part and parcel of eating something fresh off the beach. The scallops, on the other hand, what I'm going to do with those, anybody who's watched our videos before will have seen the way that I prepare scallops. In the inside of the shell, oh, get that little hitchhiker off his back. Inside of the shell, there will be a disc of mussel and then a row and a frill. And what we're going to do is we're going to take off the top half, take the frill out, and use the shell as like a little cooking dish. Just like that. There is the mussel. There is the roe or the coral, the orange and white part in there and everything else is the frill. Now, this is probably not gonna work because I'm gonna show you for camera, but you can get hold of the stomach and you pull it and it should all come out in a wanna, just leaving the muscle behind, almost, almost in a wanna. 
just leaving it behind like that. Give it a little bit of a rinse. That's ready to go on the fire. Just like that. Muscle, coral, frill. There you go. Right, I have these scallops all prepped now and all the frills and the top shells. You can see here that some of the some of the rows are really vivid like that. And other ones are really depleted. The row, the coral, is the reproductive organs. So some of them have obviously, they're spent, and those are yet to go. Now, if you're cooking these at home, you could keep the frills and you could make a stock with them. Or you could keep them and use them for bream bait. All we're gonna do here is we're just gonna return them to one of the rock pools. So like the crabs and blinnies and gobies, they can have a feed as well. So everything gets returned to the ecosystem. Nothing goes to waste. The fire is just dying down now to coals. I reckon another five, 10 minutes and that'll be ready to cook on. The fire has died down to coals. I've just spread them out. I am about to parcel up some of these razor clams. I've got some with just a bit of butter and some lazy garlic, some with some butter and some hot sauce. And Hannah has prepared our scallops with butter and garlic. And then we will add some hot sauce when they're nearly finished cooking. All I'm gonna do is We've flattened the coals off and just arranged those. Now you might need some jiggling around because throughout there will be some parts of the fire that are hotter than others. But they cook in their own little dish. Right, the moment of truth with some of my clams. So, you can see there what they're like when they're fully open. They've all just popped and steamed in a bit of butter and garlic. Now, ah, ooh, crikey, <laughs> <laughs> that was hotter than I thought it was going to be. I can't, I can't put it in my mouth, it's that hot. But, but they're cooked. <laughs> It doesn't right. look like it. I will let them cool down. <laughs> it doesn't look aggressively hot. No, I try, they're, they are hot. <laughs> like, mm. Yeah, come back to that. You get the donkey bread ready? Yeah. Right, this is the main of the foot. It's got the texture of squid, but it tastes like crab. Crab or <laughs> crab, yeah. <laughs> Garlicky, chewy crab. So if that's what you're into, yeah, these are great. You're really selling it to me. <laughs> yeah. Sure, you don't want to try one. I'm fine holding the camera. I'll try the chilli one now. Yeah. Now oh, that looks better. A little bit of chilli and juice in there. Look. Yeah, they've, they've steamed perfectly in there. They, ooh, yeah. And again, it's, it's like ready. I would have learned the first time. And the scallops are... I think they're ready now, aren't they? Almost done. A couple more seconds on the scallops. There we are, the scallops are ready. Mm -hmm. James doesn't like scallops, so James is starting on his marshmallows. How about, you want me to just give you a glove? Oh, I like it. Good idea. There we go. We did get some extra large marshmallows for James. Is that alright, James? Yeah. And I'm going to get stuck straight into one of these. Okay. What's the oh. bets that I burn myself? Oh, yeah, yeah, that's going to go. I'd put money on it. I'd be glad I'll lift some mm. up. Delicious. Delicious. Some of the best part though is dunking bread into this juice here, look. 
No, 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 you will. I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> Chipping all the juice. Just like that. That is incredible. You right there, James, for your marshmallow? Yeah. Oh my god, it's so hot. It's Good lad. They are absolutely, well, absolutely perfect. <laughs> you know, if you want to put the glove on, James, so you don't burn your hand. Oh, no. It's alright, I'll do the marshmallow. It's alright, it's there, look. Can I have a little bit more bread, please? Mm. Well, we're going to finish up with these scallops. James has got his ration of marshmallows I hope you enjoyed joining us I hope you found it interesting all the very best what do we say James bye from the fish locker what just happened then James got nipped. you got nipped what I just said to mm. you <laughs> you generally learn the painful <laughs> lessons quickly don't you oh, no. <laughs> Come here and give me a cuddle. Come here.